how to use the filter tools in Excel to help us on a daily basis to save time and also to automate tasks. With the filter tool that we have in Excel, we can filter the data and also organize, sort, and make analysis. And another interesting tool that we're gonna see here is from a range that I can select, such as a range with currency or numbers, percentages, or texts, sentences, words, doesn't matter. You can select a range in Excel of data, like this one that I selected here. And in the status bar, you can see a lot of different analysis, such as the addition of all those values, the maximum, the minimal, the count, and the average of those values in the range. So let's find it out through this practical example in Excel. How can we use the filter tool to help us save time and also make analysis using any data set? So let's go. First of all, to use the filter tool in Excel with first, must add the filters into our data set. So let's say this is my data set, the table where I want to filter and organize and analyze the data. So let me click within this data and then I can use the shortcut key that is Control Shift L in my keyboard to add the filters in the headers of my spreadsheet. Or I can also go to the data tab and to the right, I'm going to have the same tool as before, the filter. And I just can click in this button. Or if you prefer, you can use Ctrl Shift L to add or disable the filters. Okay, so the first step is done. Now we have the filters tool into our data set. Now let's see how can we use the filters to help us filter the data and also make analysis. So first of all, we have the filters in all the columns of our data set. As I have one, two, three, four, five different columns, I also got five different filters. Let's say I want to filter everything using the date as a criteria. So let me click in the filter within the data column and I want to filter everything that is equal to January or February or March or on and on. So I can start with the year, that is the main filter, 2025 that I have. And then I can move on to the month and also move on to the days within a month. Uh, but I don't want to use the days specifically. I just want to keep up with maybe February. So this is the option that I selected here. Let me click OK. Now all the dates that match with my criteria, that is February month, are being displayed for me. And everything that is not equal to February it are being hide in the data set such as January and also March, I can see both of those months, but just February. I can also use different filters uh, to different columns and also coupled filters using mo multiple columns. So let's say I just filtered here the date, but I, instead of only using the date as a condition, February, for example, I also want to see the items that is uh, equal to vitamins. So maybe B12, B complex and vitamin C, D, and K. And then I'm going to click OK. So, as you can see, now we coupled two different filters the date and also items. Now, let's move on to inventory transactions. I only want to see everything that is equal to entry and then OK. Now, again, we coupled three different filters. We are using here three different criteria the date, the item, and the inventory. This is much easier to analyze the data and the way I can see everything that is equal to February, everything that is equal to a stock entry, and everything that is equal to a vitamin, B, D, C, B12, K, and on and on. So this is how we can use multiple filters into just one single data set to help us make analysis in Excel. Another thing that is very important is how can I clear the filters that I did and also what are the columns that are being used with a filter? First of all, to check the columns that are with the filter option, we can see through the icon of the filter itself. So if a column are with a filter, you can see this little funnel within the tool. But if you have just a arrow pointing down, you can, you can know for sure there is no filter at all in this column. But if you have a funnel, within the icon, it's because this filter is enabled. So let's say, how can now I clear all the filters? You can go to the first one and then clear filter from date 
and go to the second one and clear filter from item and on and on. But let's say you have 10 active filters. It's going to take a long time to clear everything. So something that is much easier is to use again the shortcut key, Control Shift L, to read off all the filters. And if you want to input or activate the filters again, you can use Control Shift L, and that's it. So you can use the shortcut key to help you out. Another way to do it, let me filter something here, V12, and then OK. Uh, I also want to filter the inventory transactions, XCT, OK. So now I have a filtered data set. I want to clear everything without using the shortcut key. I can go again to the data tab, and here to the right, I have the option clear. If I click here, everything is going to be clear for me. So those are the three different ways on how can we clear a filter in Excel. And even though the name of the tool is filter, it can also do different things, such as organize or sort the data from A to Z or from Z to A or from the largest value to the smallest one or vice versa. So let's say we can clearly see that the dates that I have are all unorganized, let's say. So I want to organize from January up to December, January, February, March, on and on, and also organize the days. The first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and on and on. So let me click in the filter within the date column, and I can go to the first option, sort A to Z, or oldest to the newest, like this, and we're done. So this is how we can organize or sort the data in a correct way. I can also do the opposite. Let me click in the filter again, and I want to sort from the newest to the oldest one, like this. Okay, it's working. But let me go again to the from A to Z. I can also sort different things, such as names, texts, sentences, letters, let's say. Uh, let me click in the item, and I want to also sort the items, because we can see that the zinc is the first item of this list that I have. However, zinc starts with the letter Z. And Z is the last letter of the alphabet. So I want to input this item in, in the last order, right? So let me click here again and sort A to Z like this. Now we have a correct order. I can go again and sort from Z to A and on and on. I can also sort by colors. So let's say I have here a couple of cells or a couple of items. Let's take those items right here in Home tab. Let me change the color to a orange-ish one. And I want to organize those items first. So I can click here and then sort by color and stick with the color that I just highlighted those cells. And as we can see, now those items are the first one in the list. And if we have many different colors, you can, we can again sort all those colors using our own criteria. Let me read it off the highlight of those cells and sort everything again. Okay. We can also sort by price or by a value, by a number, percentage, currency, fractions, you name it. So here I'm using from the smallest to the largest one. We can also sort again for, from a text such as inventory transaction, entry or exit, and again using a number. But let me go back to the date and sort everything from the oldest one to the newest one. This is what I actually need. And yeah, that's it. So as we could see here, the filter in Excel can actually filter the data, but it can also help us organize, sort the data in the way we need. Now, the last tool or functionality that I want to show here is the status bar. So first of all, let me start filter some data that I want to analyze. I want to see first all the dates that are equal to February and then OK. And I also want to see not all the items that I have, but just the items that are equal to, let's say, fish oil, creole oil, and multivitamin, protein powder, zinc, and vitamin D. Okay, now my data set is filtered for me. And another thing, I don't want to see all the inventory transactions, but just the ones that are exit. And then, okay, that's it. Now I have a filtered data set. Let's say I want to know all the money or all the value or the total sold for all those items. I can select the price and instead of using any formula or any function in Excel to make an addition of all those values to add up those values, I can go to the status bar 
And here I have a plant of many different informations, such as sum, the maximum value, the minimum one, the count of all those values, everything that I selected, basically all the rows, so 33, and also the average of those values. And to enable this status bar, you can right click in the footer and then you can activate the functionalities, the formulas, the functions that you want to use, such as average, count, minimum, and on and on and on. Uh, maybe you can activate everything because I think it's very useful to use. So this is how we can use this functionality in Excel to help us create faster analysis. You just need to select the data that you want to see. Let's say, what is the exit for all those items in February that I selected? I can simply select the quantity and go to the status bar and the result is 89. So, okay, simply to create analysis using the status bar in Excel. A very common question in Excel when the subject is filter. If I filter a data in Excel and I want to format just a specific rows, the rows that are being hide behind the ones that I can see are going to be formatted as well or not. So take a look here. I have the, my data set. I want to apply filters as we did learn before, Control Shift L. And then I want to see all the vitamin C. So I can click in the items and then select just the one that I need and then click OK. If I want to highlight with a different color, let me select all the items that I filtered. OK. If I, let's say, use a yellowish color with a red text, those items, as I can see, now have a different color. But the items underneath it or behind those ones are going to be formatted as well. Let's uh, clear the, the filters. Control Shift L. So, OK. What we did is perfectly correct. No, the items that are behind the ones that we filtered, they are not going to be highlighted as well. They are going to remain with the same format as before. So let's say now I want to highlight the stock entries. So I can press here, Control Shift L to input the filters. And then I want to use stock entries. OK, let me select everything until the ending of the spreadsheet and then Home tab. I want to use a greenish background and a greenish, a dark green as the text font like this. Now, if I clear the filters, as we can see, everything that is equal to the stock entry are being highlighted with a different color. But the options that I did not select before, such as stock exit, are not being highlighted for me. So yeah, we can still filter the data and select everything that we need and apply a different format because this new format is only going to be applied to the items, to the options that we filtered. So this is how we can use the filter tool in Excel to help us filter, organize, sort, and analyze the data that we have. And also this is how we can use another tools in Excel, such as the status bar. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below. And I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video. I see you there.